And if you think of this, this is what I call afters. I've talked about afters in many different guises. But what I mean by afters, it's what people are left with afterwards. Some of you will have bought a newspaper before now. And I imagine when you bought the newspaper, you were absolutely convinced that you wanted a newspaper. I don't think you did. Based on afters, you don't want a newspaper. Why do you buy a newspaper? What do you really want? You want the news or the sport or the gossip or something to do on the train. Whatever it is that's important to you, nobody ever has bought a newspaper because they want one. Similarly, nobody has ever bought toothpaste because they want toothpaste. What do you want? You want clean teeth or to smell beautiful on Friday nights, whatever it is. So nobody wants the thing, they always want the afters of the thing. And similarly, none of you here, and this is quite upsetting for me, are truly interested in what I'm talking about. <laughs> You're much more interested in what you can do with it after I've stopped talking. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Well, think about it. If somebody says, please, can you do me a report on topic X? They don't want the report on topic X. They want what that report will give them, the afters of it. So how to get things right first time is never to do the thing that's been asked. It's to provide the afters of the thing that's been asked. Now, if you think about afters, there are three tenses in the world. There's the past tense, that's things that have already happened. We have the present tense today, and we have the future tense. Of those three, where do afters happen? Well, they happen in the future because they haven't happened yet. So the best questions to ask to find what somebody truly wants is a future-based question. I'm going to give you two or three future-based questions to start you off. And then afterwards, because this is just my personality speaking when I tell you my questions, afterwards, why don't you guys just work together to see if you can come up with a list which sounds more like your personality speaking rather than mine. If somebody says something to you like, please, can you produce a report on this? A future-based question might be something like, sure, of course I can. Just so I'm clear, what is it you're looking to achieve with this report? Now, the word, what are you looking to achieve? Can you hear that's in the future? So we're not talking about what should go in the report yet. We're saying what should happen after the report. And all these future-based questions, what do you want people to feel after they've read the report? As long as you start focusing on the future of the communication, not the communication, the communication more or less writes itself. <laughs> I asked a group of people a while ago to come up with some future-based questions, and I, just as I will do with you, um, I gave them two minutes. I said, come up with as many as you can. Try and get to 10 in two minutes. That's quite a challenge, but sometimes people will say, and what would success look like? And how will you know we've arrived? And what are the performance? And they're just very good at this. And so I asked this group of people, come up with 10 in two minutes. And after about four seconds, one person stops and said, I've done it. I thought, how did you get 10 in four seconds? I teach this. I couldn't get 10 in four seconds. How have you done this? And he goes, where would you like to be in one year? Where would you like to be in two years? Where would you like to be in three years? <laughs> well, that's just cheating. So, ladies and gentlemen, have a quick conversation. If somebody asks you to do something, what sort of questions could you ask other than what are you looking to achieve?